back and welcome to my channel. Today I'm just going to show you how to make your own measuring uh, graph mat or craft mat, whatever you want to call it. It helps me when I'm measuring out my clay when I'm using it or if I just want to get the idea of a size of a stamp that I'm going to be using in a card. Also helps me to uh, position anything when I'm putting it onto a card. Um, so it can help make sure that I've got something lined up. But as you can see this one moves around at the moment. When I first uh, started using this I had a glass uh, cutting mat. It was an old uh, chopping board that I'd uh, peeled the back of the um, cutting mat. That, you know like the picture that's on the back of it and I used that. And the rubber feet came off for it eventually because I'd, I'd been using it that much and I just put it over the top of this. Uh, and then I thought, well, I've got no more uh, little rubber feet for it. But then I had a thought, well, I could just uh, use sticky back plastic. So I'm uh, going too far in front anyway to start with. But this is just an A3 sheet of card that my husband uh, very uh, generously drew out all the lines. His hands are a lot steadier than mine. So as you'll see in my videos, my fingers uh, do things when... Um, I'm not wanting them to. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, as you can see, hang on, let's go down. On this side, he did me inch uh, squares and then divided it into halves and quarters as well. And he also went down onto this one and he did eighths and sixteenths. Now, you don't have to do that many, it's up to you however many you do. So, I'll zoom back out come across to this side and then this half is in centimetres and then this has turned into half centimetres and quarter centimetres essentially um, but I want oh sorry about that uh, I just wanted to show you how you can make one without having to draw it out by hand if you've got a steady hand you can do it yourself and obviously all you need is a ruler a pencil and some coloured pens but a cheating way that I've found is by printing off some and this is a free um, graph paper that you can download off the internet uh, this one is printgraphpaper.com I'll uh, either put the link in the video or uh, in the description box for you and it's got all different graph papers there are other websites as well this is just the one that I found when I was uh, thinking of doing this video now this one is quarter inch squares and I'm going to show, tell you how to go through and do it this way and then also you can get some that are a quarter inch uh, not quarter inch sorry a whole inch so this one's particularly good for if you're measuring out clay and things like that and you want to keep your straight lines if you're cutting different uh, layers for canes and things like that and then you can also get a centimetre sheet and as you can see all I've done is just number them going all the way around so say if I wanted to put something right into the corner down here as you can see I've just numbered it all the way along okay so if I wanted to cut something onto, onto this or mark it out I'd put whatever I've got in the centre here and if I'm wanting to measure it out say to seven centimetres you just put your ruler, your piece up to that part and then you'd be able to mark it out a lot easier But because if you join up like the number five at the bottom on and to the number five at the top you know that you're going to be getting a bang straight line which is essentially what you're looking for when you're using one of these mats I'm not really good with this zooming in and out thing so I do apologise so the way that I'm starting out is I'm just taking a sheet of the quarter inch um, graph paper which when it comes out it looks like this. It's not the full A4 but if you wanted to extend it to the full A4 you'd just have to work, carry on the lines with your ruler and a pencil. I'm just sticking to what it is because I'm wanting to do an A3 uh, project. Let's turn that one out and then you can see that one a little bit better. Right now so I've got my paper in the uh, portrait uh, orientation and as you can see here I've just uh, wrote down here what size grid 
I'm using. And then, ooh, I, will, I will get the hang of this, I promise. And then I've picked four colours what I'm going to use um, as my guidelines. So that, say if I'm not wanting to just keep looking at the numbers all the time, say if you want something that's three and a half inches, you'd go along to the three and then just think, right, I need up to the red line. So what I've chosen is I've used green for the quarter inch within a whole inch, red is half, blue is three quarters and the black lines are for one full inch. You don't have to use these colours, whichever ones that you want to do, this is just the colours that I chose. So what I did first was I marked out so what I did was I just marked out one inch every four spaces uh, and I just put a little black mark on each of those at the top and the bottom and then side to side and then I just took my ruler met those up and I drew along the line and that's essentially what we're going to be doing for the entire of this piece so I found it easier to work backwards um, well I suppose you could work from uh, one side to the other one but that's up to you but I started out with the whole inches and then I went to the three quarters then the halves and then the quarters so I knew that once I'd done my black lines for the uh, three quarter uh, for the three quarter ones it'd be one square down and I needed my blue pen and then same again for the red I just moved over to the second square and uh, then I drew a red line and then for the quarter in uh, inch I've put use the green so we've got I've just realized I did a mistake on when I wrote it down uh, early and I didn't get rid of it see the wonder of tipex there we go and i'm keeping this on here just to remind me because i know what my brain's like and i'll go and forget so you just want to make yourself one of these Back out now. and then carrying on with the inches if you just get one of the uh, one inch square papers and we're going to put those side to side on a a3 piece of cardstock. Now the other thing that I'm going to mention is I'm using sticky back plastic. If you've got a laminator and you're using these A4 ones you can simply laminate them and then that is good to go. You don't need to use the sticky back plastic this is just it's because of what I've got and I want to use it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to stand up to do this one I'm afraid so uh, if I'm not the camera again, don't laugh at me too much. So I've got just an A3 sheet of cardstock here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it, stick these two side by side. All right, so I've got my glue, and I'm just using the uh, cloud glue because that'll just uh, not warp the uh, sheets and it will uh, make it even stronger which is always a good thing because we're making a craft mat so just give it a, a good covering you don't need to absolutely drown it it's just to make sure that it stays where we want it to go and then see I told you I've knocked the camera and I'm just lining it up to the corners and the edges of the card down like that and then exactly the same with just the simply plain one inch paper okay so then make sure it's the way around that you want it then line it up to next to that one and it will fit perfectly because essentially an A3 is two A4 pieces stuck together. So that's on one side. Now it's up to you whether if you want to make it double sided or not. I'm going to do it just so that uh, I've got it all in one go. So I've just got my one centimetre one. 
And I'm just going to stick this one in the middle because I've not got another one to go to either side. In fact, no, I'll, I'll prop it to the side and then if I think of another one that I want to stick on, uh, I can do. In fact, another one. It's all right. This is what my brain's like. I'm uh, besides things at the last minute and then go and change my mind again. So... Because I don't use the uh, centimetre side as much when I'm crafting. I tend to go with the inches side just because everybody speaks in the inches side, I suppose, when they're, when they're crafting and measuring and stuff. But I like to have the option there for me. Okay. And then I've got that completely stuck down. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do this side first. Now, essentially what we're going to be doing is laminating this. Because I'm going to make the sticky go over the edges just so that I can do a nice trim around the outside because I don't want to fold it over onto the other side if I'm doing it double sided and then have uh, sticky bar plastic lines going around the edges. I want it to look clean and professional. Now this is out of one full roll and I managed to get two one sided um, cutting mats done with this one and then this is, this is what's left over. Uh, I got it from the range and it is 45 centimetres by a metre and it was a pound so it was really really cheap. Uh, get my scissors. Now this stuff I went through loads when I was at uh, school because I covered every single one of my exercise books and folders so I started at a very young age of just decorating everything. So and there would be a little bit more sellotape, wouldn't there? There we go. So, you'll see on the inside of it, it's uh, not the plastic grid. Now, if you just want to roughly measure out how much you're going to want to need. Now, remember, you want to need to go over the edge just a little. So, if you just, if you Feel over the top for the edge of where your card is. Just sort of don't have to be exactly because what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little pencil mark down to where we want it to go. So if you roll the plastic down and then just feel to where it finishes, and I'm going to cut along that line there. So take that out. There's my little line. And all I need now is my little snips. Now, because this has been rolled up, it is going to curl a heck of a lot, but it's not matter in a second. Again, this bit doesn't need to be absolutely neat because it's going to be getting trimmed off later on anyway. Okay? Now, whenever I've been doing this, I have learnt that if you start with one side and work your way across, I generally go from the smallest side to the next smallest side. So I'm sure there's plenty of you that have used this in the past and you're probably thinking, well, why are you telling me how to put this in? I'm putting it in because there might be some people there that's never heard of it. Now I'm rolling it in the opposite direction just to try and get a bit of that curl out because it, it's been curled up in the warehouse for however long. So the sticky back. Excuse me, there's a dog going off in the background. It's really, really thin. As you can see there, it just peels back. So I'm just going to peel the full shorter side. And I'm going to... Sorry, I'm having to pull off the camera so I don't uh, plonk it all the time. And then once you've got both ends of it, just stick it just over the edge at either side and it will stick it down there like that and then your paper will be underneath so as you peel it away underneath just keep rubbing see I've got a little bit crooked on there you might get little air bubbles don't worry about it just lift it up and go backwards, just take your time doing this, pressing out all of the air bubbles.
you're only doing one sided, that's absolutely fine. You can tuck your edges around each side. I'm not because I've put it on the other side. So what I'm going to do now, I'll rub them down a little bit, just flip it over. And then I'm going to measure out another piece of the sticky back. So I'll do that now. And then I'll come back because you don't need to see me cutting it out again and I'll come back once I'm ready for sticking it out. Right, so I'm back. Now I've got my uh, sticky back plastic cut out and I'm just getting it peeled back on the short side again. And I'm getting it stuck to itself. And I realised why it's not that this is why it's important to roll it backwards. Because we're going to do it before I start filming again. Because it's easier to get your um, sticky back off the back end. So I'm just going to line it up with the piece that I put on the other side and try not to get it stuck to any other pieces I don't want it to just yet. So we're just basically doing the exact same thing and then the edge pieces we're going to trim off. see now I've got like this lip going all the way around so I'm just going to take my scissors just trim now if you've got a big enough uh, guillotine paper cutter you could use that that'll be a lot quicker your measuring and craft mat complete and so it's all laminated as now as such so that you can put your clay on it and it'll not stick to the paper you can measure anything that you want and then if you are using it as for, for clay like I do and you're using your blade quite a bit if it makes any marks you can just make another one and it only costs you pennies so I hope that helps you and it saves you some money because you can spend that on some other craft supplies and uh, you can make as many of these as you want. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.